We are definitely ready to get started on this. So the first thing that we want to do is figure out what kind of complementary colors we want for our craw pattern. It is in a three piece. The other thing that you need to figure out is what order you're going to do these stencils in. So um, I've kind of got them lined up. Actually, I don't. I have them lined up the way that I want them. Uh, and the reason is this one has the underside, the belly of the crawl. So that's going to be a fairly dark color. But we're going to do this one twice. So this one is going to act as the first stencil and the last stencil. Okay, this is going to be our second stencil. This is a complementary color as well. And I always, because this is my white stencil, I like to do a little bit of a white highlight in that. And uh, you're going to be seeing a picture of the blue crawl that I just finished with the same exact stencil outlines. The white really accents and it makes your it makes your crawfish stand out, makes that stencil stand out. But you want darker colors surrounding that white or else the white's just not going to look like anything. Um, that's our third color and then we'll do a darker color as our final, our fourth. So we've got first and fourth, second and third. Now you don't have to do four. I do four so that I can give a little bit extra accent to the segmented pieces along the bottom of our crawl. And I'm going to show you as we go along what that means. But in the meantime, this works with a 1.5 Jonas's Craws over at Lower Color Studios. They are similar to the ones over at Cedar Run, which is here in the States. Um, I just, I happen to like this pattern a lot. So I'm using, I'm using his stencils, um, and, I, and I should be, I should be testing out some Cedar Run stuff later, later on, probably towards the fall of this year. We have this 1.5, so the easiest way to describe it is to show you how to do this. So we're going to set this in just like this. Now these are 3D printed and laser etched cross stencils, and they fit snug as a bug in a rug on everything that they're supposed to, to fit on. So your S-crank is going to only fit the S-crank and it's, it's uh, made from the imprint I believe over at Dinger, that mold. And then the stencils that you guys get from him are going to have little alligator clips and he puts these little red tips on the alligator clips which makes it very handy, real easy to go on and off. And as you can see, this mold right here is made specifically for this type of alligator clip. So he sends those along at no extra charge. Comes with the price of these stencils. Now, not every stencil he sells is in uh, a three-piece. Some of them are just standard patterns. And he's got a good selection over there. So go check him out, Lure Color Studios. We have this on here. So how do you figure out now that we have our order, one, two, three, and four, this is going to be one and four, how do you know what you're going to do? Well, we've got orange and green. So if we're looking at colors that complement and are going to stand out a little bit, I'm going to choose similar colors. I'm going to go with a darker green. This used to be a leaf green, but I have mixed it. You can see how nice and dark. It's almost a moss, but it's not quite as dark. The moss greens that come from Wicked Colors are almost black but I have a little bit of gold pearl in here, so it's gonna give that just a little bit of flash. And if we wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison between the color that I've mixed together and the original Createx Transparent Leaf Green, let's go ahead and do that, just to show you the difference in what I've created. Yeah, let's see, we'll get a brush big enough to show you guys, and I'm just gonna do one stroke of each. and shake this. I haven't had to use this in a little bit because I have a different color I've kind of been fixated on lately, that tropical green. It's also quite nice. But if you want to take a look at the original, this is the original leaf green. It's got a lot of yellow in it. Great color. Not quite a khaki. And then we pull this dark green out. 
Wow, you can see a difference there. Now that is almost like an olive green. And it's a very significant color, especially around here in the Ozarks and other places in the country as well. But you can really see a difference between the original color and the color that I've mixed. I haven't found a color exactly like this except for when I mix it together. There may be some out there and if you guys know of, of any paints that have that, um, throw a comment in the description below. Love to know what, what other colors I can get that are very close. Now there are some air testers colors for, um, for model air, almost like for the, the little game pieces if you're into D&D &D and stuff like that. Um, so you might find it there. But in the meantime, you can really see the difference between the transparent leaf green and this, I call it an Ozark green transparent. And I've done the same thing with orange. So our colors today that we're gonna complement and use in these cross stencils are gonna be complementary to the, uh, the orange and green in there. Also have some Ozark orange. And if we flip this over, I'll show you what that looks like. I've cleaned off the, uh, I've cleaned this off pretty well. This is going to be a much darker hue than the uh, the regular transparent orange. And if you look now, once I get all the colors down that we're going to use today, if you go ahead and look at that against the bait that we're using that we've already sprayed and primed. This is a, uh, a burnt sienna from Wicked. And this has a lot of orange properties in it as well. You can see all the gold and glitter in this. A darker, now this is going to come afterwards. So these are our complementary colors. And then white. You all know what white looks like. But we're going to have this one, not, not the leaf green. I'm not going to use that, so let's X that. But we're going to have this one, this one, this one, and this one. And white. Now that I've shown you the complementary colors we're going to be using on these stencils today, I want to make sure that every last bit of cleaning solution that's been in the chamber overnight. That is nice and clean. We are ready to go. So I normally kind of preach going light to dark. Not exactly going to do it that way. Uh, we're going to start with an Ozark green. Then we're going to go into a brown and then we're going to go into an orange then we're going to do a white. So this is a darker color. Yes, we have the green on top, but this is going to be about four times as dark as the green that we have on top. Remember, we've got that Createx fluorescent. I'm going to pull this down from 40 PSI, and we're going to be set on about 10 PSI, 10 to 15 at the at the max. I prefer maybe 10 or slightly under that depending on how this comes out. The key to this is also heat setting while this is on every single time you do a color change. So I'm not going to do this directly over here. We're going to show it to you just like that. Front to back, top to bottom, I'm about three inches off of this bait at the most. Okay. And we're just going to give this a light spray on the belly because we are going to come back with a darker color. I'm going to do the other side and then we're going to heat set it. I'm going to heat set this off camera today. Add just a little bit more. I only added about three or four drops, but when I'm shooting this at a lower pressure, I generally don't put as much 
paint in the chamber as I would if I were shooting at a higher pressure. All right, we have blown out all of our green because I'm heat setting and there's gonna be a little bit of time between. Let me go ahead and put just a little bit of cleaner in that chamber. Squirt some of that through. Let's go ahead and heat set and come back to you. Okay, we've heat set this first one. I'll pull this off. And you'll see very light, which is exactly what you want. You want to see a little bit of a pattern on the bottom, the segmenting, and then you want to see a little bit of a pattern up top. Not a whole lot, just enough to accent the bait because this is an accent color. Okay, that's your first one. The second is going to be this one. And on this one, you want to lay this in. Now this one is notched. The first one is not notched. It fits completely over the bottom because it has an opening for the belly segments. Make sure you're working with a bait that's going to fit properly in this as well. It's always important. And most of these 1.5s have been pressed from Lucky Craft molds, which is a super duper 1.5. All right, we have our second one. Okay, and this is going to be a little bit heavier of an accent. And on this one, we're going to do this dark orange, and we're also going to fade. We're going to go from this color, fading back from front to back into the burnt sienna. So we're going to load a little bit into this chamber. Clear this out a little bit, get that green out. make sure you have all the cleaning stuff out of here. Always important. Let's start with this real dark Ozark orange. And again, 90 degree angle to the bait. And then we're going to come back and accent the tail pieces of this with the burnt sienna. Make sure you hit the top sections as well because you want to see the, uh, the segments a little bit more prominently on this one. Get back into that section and again we're going to stay about three inches off of here and we have completely cleared that out and we're going to set this down for a second and because we're still using this and we haven't heat set it yet this is still wet so I'm going to set that back in the cradle on the helping hands and we're gonna, I'm not gonna heat or I'm not gonna clear it. I'm just gonna add a few drops of a little bit darker burnt sienna. Just come back and hit this as a fade. Now the Wicked is just a little bit thicker than the Createx. So, just a tad darker on this back side. You wanna do that while it's wet so you can get the best blend. that's it. Heat set this off camera and we'll come back and do the next layer. We've now finished that second heat set and just a quick tip when you guys are finished with your stencils grab like a fingernail brush and some warm soapy water. Clean off these stencils because it is you know the opening is pretty sizable on some of them but it's super thin on the others and eventually that paint will gunk up and clog your lines and you won't get the lines that you're looking for. So now you can see we have our green in front of our orange that fades back to a burnt sienna. Now you can really start to see these segments. You can also see underneath. So you now have more of a prominent two-tone where, remember, we started off with orange on the bottom and green on the top. We now have a fairly decent mix of all of that. 
Now we're going to go for the white and then we're going to come back and finish it off with a little bit of dark accenting. Now this white should really make it stand out now that I have my darker colors on here. I'm going to clean the chamber out off camera after I finish loading this stencil with the lure. That's all clipped off. Come right back after we clean that chamber out. We've got white loaded up in this chamber now. We've cleaned out the chamber very well. Pressure should be good. Always want to come back and hit the top just like that. Make sure that you're getting down into it. You don't want to push too much paint through here though. We're going to heat set this and show you what it looks like. All set there. Wow, these alligator clips are hot. Got a good heat set on that and now look at this transformation. Now we have the knuckle segmentation up top. looking really good. We're going to come back with our first stencil and we're going to etch that just a little bit darker. We're going to come back with some brown. So I'm going to show you that. Put this first stencil back on. And you want to lay it in kind of gently. It does fit like a glove but you also don't want to scratch any of the paint that you've already coated into this bait. There we go. Set this back up. I'm going to load my chamber. Come back and shoot this. Just add a few drops here. Three should do it. Always remember when you finish cleaning your chamber to turn that pressure back down because you don't want to blow paint all over your bait. Make sure that's coming out, and it is go. Now with this, we're just going to accent the bottom and the other side. The top, get that top real good. Both sides. Nice darker brown color. Just fade that in. Get a quicker heat set on it this time. I'll show you what it looks like. We have finished the last heat set. Pulling these clips off. Show you guys what this bait looks like now. We have some very distinguished segments. I would have to say it looks pretty good. We're going to do a little bit of detailing on this bait. Just a little bit. Probably put some dots in here, maybe a little bit of shading around these eyes and uh, get it in some clear coat. A little shading on the eyes. Maybe just a little accent right here. up top. Take what little bit of that brown, that deep sepia, is left in the chamber. And let's lay in just a few dots. If we can get it. Add a little bit of detail 
down the side here in between these segments. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we're going to accent with a little bit of white too. Let's get those little bumps. You commonly see some bumps, or I call them craw dots, on the sides. It is a very natural technique to add into your crawl. Get some different sizes on there. And then do the same thing in between these segments. Add one dot in all the way back. Now on the top of this we're going to add white and then just a few pieces of white throughout. So I'm not going to use the same brush here. I'm just going to add, really all I'm going to do is grab another detail brush to our scrap paper, add a couple of drops on there, and do the same thing. Just want to have a steady hand and just kind of randomize this pattern because you want it to look as natural as possible. And if you feel your paint getting a little bit too thin on the tip of the brush, just dip it in a little bit more. Maybe one here on the cheek. And be careful not to touch the wet paint that you've just dotted with the dark. Maybe a couple on here. Given the crawl chicken pox. <laughs> sort of. Just add a little bit more to finish this off. Kind of mimic what we have on the other side. Doesn't have to be exact. Can be a little more random if you want. And as you go back, again being careful not to put your fingers in what you've already done. And then I'm just going to do a, a random pattern on the knuckles of these segments. Almost done. We'll heat set it. We'll put the eyes on it. We'll get it in clear coat. And that will be the bait, folks. pretty neat pattern and it's really going to be a sharp looking bait once that clear coat is on. I'll give you a little bit closer up of a view. And there we have it probably get a wee bit fancier with it if you wanted to, but there's really no need. Looks really good. With those eyes in there, it's going to be a really sharp looking bait. And that is my version of the Jonas Summers Lure Color Studios 3-Piece Stencil Set. I would love to see the colors you guys come up with. So you can think out of the box. I've done blue and teal and all sorts of colors. You can do a fire tiger pattern. There's really not much you can't do with these things. So let's see what you can come up with. I think I want to be a little bit different and uh, put some eyes that are going to complement this bait. These are from Lure Parts Online. There's your website reference. For 1.5s, the 7 30 seconds fits really well. The only problem I have from time to time is that when you peel them up off of the uh, card that they come on, occasionally they'll stick to that card. Which is another reason to add one bit of Loctite super glue. Get those eyes down well. Make sure you have any of that card residual off of there. One little drop to each side is more than enough. 
And when we do that, we have to make sure that there's no liquid residue left over. You give this plenty of time to dry. Take a look at that. That's what you want to see. This is, these are perfect complements to this particular pattern, I think. Let's go ahead and get this over in better light. Get it in some clear coat, show you what this pattern looks like when it's dry. All right, we've got our eyes in. This bait looks good. We're ready to clear coat. That's the last piece of the puzzle, folks. Come over here to our spaghetti jar, our Prego spaghetti jar. The lid works really well on this. And you can see we have that saran wrap is holding tight, but you can also see there's a little tear in this. So we're gonna need to replace that or at least move it down, but replacing it's probably the best idea. Let's go ahead and dip that real slow. We've given the uh, Loctite super glue plenty of time to dry. Just set this drip wire in. We'll let that kind of pull itself off the bait. Set it up. Smoking hot. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. We're going to have another killer spray session for you. Hopefully within the next few days. Happy casting.